Hey everyone, AmtrakGuy365 here, and today on this edition of Engines of Amtrak, I'll be discussing the EMD F40PH. The F40PH needs almost no introduction, being one of the most famous and popular diesel locomotives in the United States. But to understand how it gained such a fan base and how some units are still running nearly 45 years later is what I'll be explaining today. To do that, we must go back to the year 1975. Amtrak's current fleet of inherited F and E units, the STP-40F, along with the new P-30CH started to show reliability problems. On top of this, they weren't equipped with head-end power or HEP for short. This created a predicament for Amtrak as their new replacement fleet of Amfleet coaches were being rolled out into service and were electrically powered by HEP. Amtrak went to EMD who had already won a deal to build Amtrak a long distance steam heated engine, that being the SDP-40F, and a second, faster and shorter distance HEP equipped locomotive. With that in place, EMD went back to their famous roots with a brand new F-Series locomotive. This would become known as the EMD F40PH. Dean Ellsworth was Amtrak's manager of the locomotive department and created the specifications required by the railroad. Its design was based off the successful EMD GP40-2 freight diesel, the main similarity being the engine which was an EMD 645E3. While passenger variants of the GP40 like the GP40TC and GP40P already exist, Existed, they weren't built for long distance or corridor service like Amtrak needed. Regarding technical specifications, the F stands for full width cowl body, the 40 for the model series, P for passenger gearing, and H for being equipped with head end power. They're rated for a top speed of 103 miles per hour, being powered by an EMD 645E3 16 cylinder engine producing between 3,000 and 3,200 horsepower. They weigh in at 260,000 pounds. The F40 comes in at a length of 56 feet 2 inches, a width of 10 feet 7 inches, and a height of 15 feet 7.5 inches. They're equipped with head and power using a Delco 500 to 800 kilowatt generator. Amtrak's F40 PHs came equipped with either a Nathan K5LA or P5 series air horn. Here's a few samples. In May of 1975, Amtrak placed an order for 30 F40PHs, being numbered 200 to 229. These units were initially rated for 3,000 horsepower, whereas later units would be equipped with 3,200 horsepower. Regardless, these new F40s were planned for service on the San Diegan, as well as unelectrified portions of the Northeast Corridor between New Haven, Connecticut, and Boston, Massachusetts. The SDP-40Fs and P30CHs would meanwhile continue long-distance service. The F40s would then be rolled out into service beginning April 9, 1975. However, two events eventually triggered a change in Amtrak's thought process. First was the sharply declining reliability quality and derailment issues of the STP-40F, which you can learn about in Engines of Amtrak STP-40F. Second was the extreme winter of 1976-77 to which suspended many of Amtrak's routes and older steam-heated passenger equipment. Luckily though, the F-40s were available and put through their paces pulling Amfleet equipped trains as the new coaches were quickly put on the rails. At the end of the winter season in 1977, Amtrak had a new plan. They adopted the F-40PH as their new long-term locomotive power for all trains and began work with EMD to put this plan into action. The first step was trading in 40 SDP-40Fs to EMD in exchange for 132 F-40PHRs numbered 230 to 361. These were F-40s built using SDP-40F components like air compressors, electrical components, and they featured a larger fuel tank. Amtrak had realized the F-40 was a do-it-all locomotive being suited for almost any kind of service required whether it be long-distance trains through the mountains or fast-running corridor trains on flatlands. 
Other railroads like the Regional Transportation Authority, later known as Metra, the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority, Go Transit, Via Rail, among other groups, took notice of the F-40's success and ordered their own units throughout the late 1970s and early 80s. By this point for Amtrak, the F-40PH had become the poster boy for advertising and being heralded as the modern and prestigious diesel locomotive of their system. Next time you're planning to fly somewhere, consider going with a carrier who has spent the last seven and a half years rebuilding its entire fleet. A fleet that now offers you some of the newest, most technologically advanced equipment in the world. Not surprisingly, it's also among the most comfortable. Next time, see what a thrill it is to fly on a train. Additionally, the F-40PH would be featured in several movies and other media, further cementing its notability and being the icon of Amtrak. The F-40s would affectionately be nicknamed Screamer by crews and rail fans, as to supply electricity and climate control to the coaches, the prime mover would constantly need to run at 900 RPM, thus creating a deafening roaring noise. By April 1990, Amtrak had amassed a fleet of 215 F-40 locomotives after a purchase of six from GO Transit. Amtrak's units numbered 200 to 415, and eventually replaced the entire SDP-40F and P-30CH fleet. Other railroads, like Via Rail, had managed to replace an especially old fleet of locomotives, with their variant being the F-40PH-2D. This version had desktop controls, ditch lights, and other Canadian-specific details. Furthermore, operators like Metra had a custom cab variant known as the F-40PHM-2, MBTA with the lengthened F-40PH-2C, and New Jersey Transit using the F-40PH-2CAT, named for its Caterpillar built head-end power generator. Amtrak's units, despite four now being retired, were still providing excellent service across their system. As a matter of fact, Trains Magazine estimated the average unit traveled 175,000 miles per year. Railroads like Norfolk Southern even began leasing out Amtrak F-40s for freight runs during power shortages as well. On the flip side though, many of Amtrak's units were around 15 years old, and Amtrak had begun thinking of yet another long-term replacement engine in the late 1980s into 1990. They wanted a more fuel-efficient, lightweight, do-it-all locomotive that could also provide third rail support in tunnels out east. This would culminate in the General Electric AMD-103, better known as the P-40DC, or simply, Genesis. They were 25% more powerful than the F-40 with 4,000 horsepower, were 22% more fuel efficient than the F-40, and had a single shell body design known as monocoque for a more streamlined aerodynamic appearance. On top of this, Genesis was a fully computerized locomotive, allowing it to maintain stable operations in the case of overheating, low oil pressure, and other situations. This also helped in the reliability department. Another note was Genesis was 14 inches shorter in height, allowing for ease of operation on the Northeast Corridor's antiquated clearances. Essentially, two Genesis locomotives could do the work of three F-40s, thus reducing operating costs. Clearly, Genesis was the better choice for Amtrak. In short, Genesis does what EM don't. Ha 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 That's a Sega Genesis Nintendo console war joke. It's free. What Nintendo? Before Genesis was put to work, GE had developed the P32-8BWH as a stopgap measure until the P40DC was ready. In doing that, the F40s and P32s spent a good amount of time working together. Eventually, though, the P40 was rolled into service beginning in 1993, and the F40 replacement process soon began. However, rather than scrapping all of their surplus F40 PHs, Amtrak decided in 1996, up to 2007, to convert 21 units into non-powered control units, or NPCU for short. This involved removing the prime mover, traction motors, alternators, among other parts, and installed a roll-up door on the side for baggage car service. A functional control stand was left in place, though, to allow for push-pull operations. 
the NPCUs earn themselves the nickname Cabbage, a combination of the words cab and baggage. The first unit to get this treatment was number 368, now number 9368. Despite this, some F-40s continued service in the Northeast on trains like the Maple Leaf up until around the summer of 2002. This would finally mark the end of common revenue runs for Amtrak's EMD F-40PH. Even with the F-40PH retired, holstering 26 years of service as powered units, many Amtrak F-40s still exist in some kind of service, whether that be as an NPCU on corridor trains, or even in revenue service, rebuilt on other railroads as far as Canada and Panama. F-40PH number 406 notably retained its original road number and lacked a roll-up baggage door even when converted to an NPCU in 2011. After that, it was used on Amtrak's touring exhibit train. Finally, it resumed NPCU life on the Down Easter, but as of October 2020, is in the Albany, New York shops for upgrades. Regardless of individual thoughts and opinions on the F-40, its legacy and impact is undeniable. From getting Amtrak out of a power rut in the 1970s, to proving itself as one of America's most successful passenger locomotives still in revenue service today, it cemented itself as the flagship locomotive for Amtrak, became an internet meme throughout the mid to late 2000s, and to this day is revered as a fan favorite locomotive amongst many rail fans, including myself. I mean, my icon clearly shows that you know what I'm saying! <clears throat> as recent as October 2020, F40PHR number 281 was powered up for excursions for the first time in five years at the California State Railroad Museum, retaining its original Phase 3 colors. Number 231 is also being restored by Dynamic Rail Preservation. While other F-40s haven't been as lucky, with many being scrapped or held in storage yards for parts, an overwhelming majority are still around today. Amtrak's F-40s witnessed nearly all of the railroad's paint schemes and have outlived much of the railroad's roster. Railroads like Metra, MBTA, Via Rail, among many others, all greatly continue the F-40 legacy, providing their units with consistent upgrades and maintenance, all to much success. <laughs> The F-40 series has mastered 44 years of service as of 2020, and it certainly seems like there's more to come. The EMD F-40PH will always remain, and is still part of, the history book of Amtrak, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation. Thanks for watching this remade episode of Engines of Amtrak. Thanks a ton as usual to everyone who submitted videos and pictures to use in this video as well too. Anyway, stay tuned and join me next time when I discuss the EMD F69 PHAC and its life running with the German ICE high-speed train set. Thanks again, and I'll see you all in another video.